One of these watches is a vintage Rolex Submariner, estimated to be worth up to $30,000. The other, a total knockoff. With replicas steadily improving in quality and detail, it can be difficult to tell the difference. So we headed to luxury consignment shop, The Real Real, to meet with one of its authenticity experts and learn some tips on how the average shopper can spot a knockoff. Remember your training. <laughs> Leif has gathered five pairs of luxury watches. One is real and one is a replica. And I'm gonna see how well I do telling them apart. So by the end, I'll be able to hopefully have some tips to authenticate like a pro. How do you think I'm gonna do? I think you're gonna test how good your eyes are and your right. attention to details, but I think you're gonna come out on top. All right, let's go. All right. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kit you out to handle the watches. Okay, what does that mean? That means that we have uh, certain precautions okay. that we use to handle the watches so that we don't leave any kind of fingerprints or anything, especially oh. if we have to open the watches okay. to authenticate or just handle them in general. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on what <laughs> are called finger cots. Here we go. Okay. There you go. And the next thing you're gonna need is a loop. Okay, a loop. See, I've already got mine on. Yes, okay. But you're gonna need, it. this helps support magnification over one eye while you're manipulating things with both hands. Okay, um, I have no idea how to start even with this. So I think that's a good way to start it. Okay. This, this wire is a little bit loose, so you can cross over like that. Okay, very cool, wow. Make sure you get a pretty good field of vision and you can just pop that up on your forehead after you feel comfortable. Okay, cool. I mean, All just right. with this, I feel more confident. We're gonna dive right in. Okay. I'm gonna show you two watches. Uh, these are two Hublot Big Bangs. They're a Swiss company, much like the majority of the watches that we sell on the real real. They're a very storied company. The key elements, things that we're gonna look for are the fit and finish. Oh, okay. The that fit and the finish. Fit and finish, especially right. in these watches where they use so many unique components. Yeah. So you wanna look at the printing on the dial, you want to look at the numbers. Uh, also in the bezel, they have these bezel screws. You want to look at the fit and finish of those, uh, how crisp and clean everything is. All right, it says Hublot Big Bang, so I feel like that's a good sign for this one. Mm -hmm. It says titanium, but it might just say that. Maybe it's not actually titanium. I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna feel the weight to see if it, if it, if it feels like titanium. Yes, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, but I also need to put it on, right? You just put the it wear on. is a big mm -hmm. part of it too. Okay, cool. It fits me perfectly. I'm made for this lifestyle. I think that's one of my biggest takeaways. It is also upside down. <laughs> I was gonna let you figure that out. <laughs> All right. Yes, great. All right, I feel like I know some things about this watch. Okay. But I'm, I'm gonna inspect the other one to see if I'm right. All right, switch. Okay, switch. <laughs> All right, automatically, I feel like this one's a little bit heavier. It's a little bit larger, so okay. it's not that's not unexpected. Yeah, right. I can already tell that the screws on this one are a little bit cleaner. So, yeah, that might mean something or it might not. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers are pretty similar on this one, too. Hmm. All right. I feel like I learned nothing from that, so I'm just gonna put it on and see how okay. it feels. <laughs> okay, I really like how this one feels. I think I know which one is real okay. and which one is fake. So after examining both Hublots, I think the real one is this one right here. With the black rim, a little bit heavier, uh, slightly nicer screws. So I feel like I'm gonna say this one. Okay, that is your guess. <laughs> okay, and am I right? <laughs> well, no, okay. you're wrong. It is a super fake, so okay. I will give you Super credit for looking at the details that you <laughs> super did. Super credit, wow. But not being familiar with what it should be. Yeah. That's where they get you. Okay, cool. Starting off, we're gonna look at the dial printing. Okay. And you can see that the Hublot on this one is raised. It's very sheen. Uh, it has a nice fit and finish to it. Okay. Also, all of the numbers are very tight and clean. Yeah. The printing of Hublot on the dial is one of the bigger tells. Yeah. Because it's not very finished, it's not raised like right. this was what we would expect to see. All right, so I definitely failed the first round, but I feel like I can do it on this next round. So what do we have? For round two, we have the Omega Seamasters. Okay. We'll take them off the cuff, because these we want to inspect every angle, uh, all the fine details, as well as the case back, because these have a special engraving. This has a, a hippocampus on the back. Pretty well crafted from what I can see. 
All right, I'm okay. gonna try it on to see how it fits. Feels good, not too heavy, not too light. Hand me the next one, sir. Okay, this one is a slightly different model. Okay. But that's half the fun. I feel like this is a big deal. This one, the hippocampus, and all the things that are happening on the back are sort of raised. And they're like engraved on the back, which I feel like might be an important sign. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do for this one because I didn't do it for the last one. I'm gonna look at them both together, which I feel like is really gonna help me see things. I'm gonna make a guess, an educated guess. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say that this one is the real watch. Okay. <laughs> Am I right? You are not right. Oh you were God. fooled again. One of the things that you didn't do okay. was you didn't check the bezel. This bezel doesn't turn. Ah, uh, okay. That one does. Oh, wow. <laughs> and on all dive watches that have dive bezels, they'll have a uh, unidirectional bezel, meaning wow. it turns in one direction. Yeah. So that's a pretty big tell. But again, you're dealing with a super fake. Wow. You did admirable. <laughs> uh, you know, they're, they're very hard to tell apart. Thanks for trying to make me feel better. This is not going well, but I feel, I still feel confident for some reason. <laughs> I can still meet the goal I set of getting three of these right. So let's just hop into the next one. What do we have? Next, we're gonna look at Cartier Santos 100s. Wow, these are beautiful. These are beautiful watches. These are one of the best sellers that we have at the Real oh. Real. These are meant to be worn. Okay. I mean, the artistry is there and Cartier does it probably better than anybody else. Okay. Their designs are fabulous but these are functional micro machines. We'll have a look at these. All right. And again, we're looking at fit and finish. I'm gonna put this one on the table for now and take a look at this other one here. Okay. Now this one, I'm already seeing some wear, which is perhaps a good sign. Someone probably really wore this. Really, really sturdy. I'm gonna take a look at this one more time side Absolutely. by side. Now, I will tell you about one other thing that Cartier does. They have a secret signature on the dial. On the dial. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to find the secret signature. <laughs> It'll say Cartier. Okay. And it's hidden. It's not obviously right the big Cartier on right. the front of the dial under the 12. But there's another hidden Cartier signature. Oh, I found it. It's like, I guess, in between the, the six and the next number over here. Is that it? Yes. All right, so what I noticed also looking at this is that there are like little pieces surrounding the diamonds that are not the same. Like they don't always go around the diamond. There's kind of, it's kind of messy on the side here. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a real Cartier watch would have gotten that right. So here we go. And this is a very important round. Out of these two watches, I do believe this one is the real watch. You got it. Yes! <laughs> that is it, that is it. It's still in. All right, yes. So I got that one right. Now we're on to the fourth one. We're nearing the finish line. What do we have here? Okay, so what we have here are two vintage Rolex Submariners. Okay. <laughs> These sold for less than $1,000 when they were new. Okay. But now the watch that I'm gonna hand you are retailing for about $30,000 because they are oh. so collectible. What are the first things that you're noticing? Noticing some similarities just inside under the dome, but also noticing some differences. So I just think I, think I need to take a, a closer look. Absolutely. All right. Definitely dive into these. I'll start with this one. The logo looks right. Mm, it's called the Coronet. The Coronet, yes. <laughs> Given this era of watch, we expect that the tritium is not going to glow anymore. Okay. The half-life is expired, is no longer a luminous material. Okay. So if you do a quick cup test of the watch, you just block out all the light, you shouldn't see any glowing. Okay, this one is actually glowing. Okay. And so you don't want to see it glowing is what you're saying? We would not expect to see that. They okay. stopped using tritium on the dials in about 1995. Okay. Okay, so we're getting a reaction Definitely to the black light there. Yeah. Okay, cool. Check this one. No. No reaction. Okay, cool. I think I know okay. which one is the real and which one is the fake. Or should I say the real real? I think, nay, I know. The oh, real one is less. this one. You are correct. Oh, yes. <laughs> the redemption is right there. I will say you gave me a lot of hints. So. I, I did on this one. <laughs> because you're feeling so confident and you're okay. doing so well, we're going to make this a little bit harder for you. Oh. Okay. I'm just gonna give you one watch. <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. You're gonna have to use everything that you've learned. All my skills. All your skills. Okay. 
this is it. This is the moment <laughs> that you move from student to master. All right. This is it. So, this is a Cartier Pasha. Okay. And this is more like real life because yes. when someone brings you a watch, you this, don't really have another one necessarily to look at it next to. Exactly. This, this is, is exactly like, how we experience it. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going in Cartier number two, watch number five. Remember your training. <laughs> Everything seems very sturdy. I'm gonna open this up. How do you open this? <laughs> it does it has a mystery clasp. Okay. And this is what they call a butterfly clasp because it opens on two sides. Oh, no way. And you use your finger under one side and pop. Oh, wow. It so pops up on both sides. Okay, cool. Opens like a butterfly's wings. That is a pretty cool design element. <sighs> After careful consideration, I do believe that this watch is in fact real. Are you sure? And by real, I do mean fake. <laughs> no, I said real. It's oh, fine. Oh yeah, gosh. Yeah, yeah. This, this okay. is a tough one. This is this is why you're the master, and this is the reason why I am not. <laughs> the big tell is if we flip this over. All right. The movement is not what we would expect to see. Cartier ah, level finish. Wow. Well, thank you so much. It was, was absolutely great. my pleasure. So. <laughs> I'll expect you at a 9.30 on Monday. Right, yes, exactly. And, uh, we'll, we'll get you working. For lesson two. <laughs> I'm gonna take these off because my fingers are sweating. <laughs>